welcome back to the studio. Thank you. We are in here to talk about Scotland, the UK, and many other countries that Rabbi's services. Do you mind giving our audience just a brief recap of what you guys do over in the UK? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> we specialize in small group uh, mini coach tours, 16 seats, scheduled tours with guaranteed departures from um, four cities in Scotland, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Inverness and Aberdeen. Four cities now in England, London, Manchester, Bristol and Bath, Dublin and Belfast in Ireland. And we've just ventured also into Europe in Italy, Spain and Portugal. We carry almost just shy of 200,000 passengers a year. We're 30 years old, so we're trustworthy. And it's a range of day tours and extended tours up to 17 days in duration is the longest ones. And that's a all encompassing all around Scotland and the islands. So yeah, um, we, we cover pretty much all of the UK and most of Ireland. Um, and the tours can have general sightseeing tours, but also certain themes. And we're big on whiskey um, tours, obviously. And there's a lot of thematic tours, um, Outlander, um, and we've even got Da Vinci, um, going back to the Da Vinci Code with Roslyn Chapel and places like this. We have over 250 staff, most of which are guides, driver guides. So they're all English speaking tours, and it's driver as your guide as well. And if you look at any reviews or you've experienced one of our tours, you know that those are our biggest assets. These guys are fantastic. All the positive feedback we get is based around driver guides as much as anything. Those are the guys that make it memorable experiences. They'll tell you great stories, they'll entertain. Some of them are musicians, so they'll play music as they go. You can uh, expect a full entertainment package um, on one of our tours. That sounds fabulous. Yeah. So how do you go about finding your driver guides? Is there a lengthy training process? How do yeah. you know it's the mm -hmm. right guide for rabbis? Yeah, well, we're really lucky. Um, the guides, by their nature, are enthusiastic people and they're quite infectious with each other. So they will all go out on the roads, learn new stories, learn new tales, and come back and share them with each other through their social media and WhatsApp groups and things. So we're always building the knowledge as we go. What makes us potentially slightly different to a lot of companies in our market is that we employ our guides full-time year-round contracts. So they're permanent staff and they're trained to our standards. Driver recruitment is something that is always looking for new drivers. Um, as I say, there's probably about 170 drivers we've got just now across the different departure points and as well as being fully licensed and trained um, sorry the training is um, around about a six-week program and they'll go on tours with um, experienced guides and learn as they go from them as well. I'm sure you have people that are repeat travelers with Rabbies. Absolutely yes. Are they looking for those same guides again? Quite often people <laughs> get favorites yeah so uh, yeah, even in the, the world of the agents, when they come and do farm trips and things, which we're happy to support, they'll say, is there any chance that you get that driver again, this one? But they're all, they've all got their different skill sets and yeah. they all deliver fantastic um, experiences. But yeah, we have a, a really high return rate and it's one of the things that's helped us grow because we're seeing so much repeat. People will do a Ravi's tour and then they'll search, where can I go next? So they'll do Scotland one year, they'll do Ireland the next year and maybe at some point do England as well. So we've got that lovely loyalty that goes around with that. Yeah, we find that too at Alonti. When someone travels with us in one country, yeah. they want to go travel with us again, yeah. which is why now we sell 65 countries. Yeah, <laughs> and it's trust. Yes. And it's seeing for yourself the, the quality and thinking, I can do this again somewhere else, learn something new, and come back with um, long lasting memories. Yeah. So I'm sure you've had the uh, opportunity to try some of these Rabbi's tours for yourself. Yeah. Have you found like a favorite itinerary that really excites you or resonates with you? Well, I've not done all the tours because we've got, I think it's 117 different tours now we're up to. Um, but I particularly like the Scottish islands. So one of my favorites is the Isle of Arran, which is one of the more southerly west coast islands. They call it Scotland in miniature. And it's got the low part, the south part's quite flat and the northern part's more rugged. So it's almost like a smaller version of Scotland in one island and it's got the standing stones and the history and Broadwick Castle, you get the ferry across. It's got lots of elements within that um, that tick lots of boxes for people when they're looking to do a tour and just feel like you're really embracing part of Scotland in one small tour. So the Isle of Arran is uh, one of my favourites. 
Um, obviously, being Scottish, um, the Fisky Tours have some appeal to me. And you can visit lots of distilleries. Um, and their driver guides, again, are super knowledgeable. So they'll make sure you're learning as you go. And the beauty of that is that you don't have to drive. We'll take care of the driving. So um, you can have a few drams as you go along. That's lovely. So, you know, I, when I imagine the client mix on a Rabbi's tour, is it international guests? Or are you getting mainly people from North America? Is it couples? Is it families? Who are you seeing? Demographics are widespread. We have all sorts. I mean, some people expect us to be a backpacker student model. We have some, but it's not our main market. We, we, if you looked at any group of 16 on a tour, you would find a real rich variety of people. North America is a really important market for us. About 40% of our visitors come from the US and maybe about 5% from Canada. So that market is really strong for us. Um, and that's both direct bookings and agents. But it's a really varied mix. There's not a typical Rabbi's passenger, I would say. Do you have any of your tours or itineraries that really appeals to family travelers? Yeah. We're seeing more multi-generational travel mm -hmm. nowadays. Um, we do have a challenge. We don't take children under the age of, the age of five, and that's due to the, the health and safety and the structure of the vehicles, and that's a commonplace. But we are seeing more and more family groups, and as I say, multi-generational, three generations coming along and experiencing um, tours for themselves. Obviously, the whiskey tour doesn't appeal too much to, to kids, but all the others, the, the general sightseeing, the ones with the castles and the sailing on the lock and this type of thing, really appeal to all ages. So yeah, we're, we're seeing a, a surge in um, multi-generational travel. So you talked about the guides and their storytelling and how they learn new stories along the way. How do you think that this enhances the traveler experience? It just brings so much to life. I remember the first Rabbi's tour I did um, when I started was with a girl who was born in Germany but lived in Scotland for a few years. And she told stories. And she, she did about four or five different characters in the story while she was driving. She was talking to us. And it was just so immersive. And then she would sing. And she would just entertain everyone. We eventually employed her in my team. She, she wanted to change. So she moved from driving and she came into my team at that, that point. Um, but she was fantastic. And from then, you kind of knew what all the, the noise was about on social media and, and all these review sites. I then experienced it myself and thought, yeah, this is exactly what people are talking about. This is what they go away with. And as we've said, makes them come back time and time again. But as I've said as well, they're all unique. There's no two the same at all. They all have different skill sets. Little slants on different stories are just full of stories. They should be here doing this job <laughs> rather than me. And as we look forward to the future, please tell us, do you have any new uh, exciting itineraries or things that people should be keeping an ear out for? So 2024, as we've come back from the last couple of years, our aim is to just try and keep growing, try and keep building. We're creating almost a, a hub and spoke model within the UK of different departure points. And you can, we aim to try and link these up so people can move around the country using rabbis. Um, as I mentioned already, this year we launched departures from Belfast and Bristol. And next year we're doing Bath. So Bath and Bristol will both be um, departure points that will go to Stonehenge, the Cotswolds, Oxford, these typically English must-see um, areas. In Scotland for next year, we're launching a, a, a range of new day tours. Um, Glasgow, we are doing over to the East Coast, to St Andrews and Dundee. And we're doing two different day tours to Scottish islands, um, the Isle of Bute and the Isle of Arran, as I mentioned earlier. And then Aberdeen is starting to pick up for us as well. So we're now launching another tour out of there that's going south from Aberdeen down the east coast again to St Andrews and Dundee. And St Andrews has got a massive appeal just now. Not only is it the home of golf, so world famous for getting your photos taken on the Silken Bridge on the old course, but also that's got a lot of popularity because that's where um, Prince William and Kate met when they studied in St Andrews. So there's all these other connections that, that make people think that that would be a great place to go. It's a beautiful area of the country. Um, I think uh, I may have also mentioned that a couple of years back, two years ago, we launched departures from Milan, Rome, Barcelona, Madrid and Lisbon. So we're always looking for opportunities to spread the rabbi's message. Maybe one from Portland. You never know. It could be on the list. <laughs> 
And when someone's on a Ravi's tour, what kind of places do you guys stop and eat? Are you trying to share your local yeah. specialties with all the guests? Well, there's a couple of things there, yes. We are, I mean, a lot of the places we go to, we're heading out of the cities to the rural areas. So we'll try and find picturesque spots, you know, by a lockside or nearby a castle and, and have lunch there where there's lots of photo opportunities. We try and work with local businesses, put the money back into that area so that we're, it's protected and sustained for future generations, for future Rabbi's visitors yes. and for everyone else. So we go to places like the Isle of Skies, massively popular for us. And <clears throat> when we're using accommodation there, we don't just use one or two accommodation providers. Each tour will be spread amongst possibly three, four, five different providers. So we're spreading that piece of wealth to all the different operators there, making sure everyone has a piece of the cake rather than sticking to one place and giving them all the money. And that's part of our sustainability. <clears throat> we also carbon tax ourselves. So for every tonne of carbon used, we put £10 into a pot and I think we've given up to about £200,000 back to local community projects to date. So, and our staff get involved in tree planting and uh, rebuilding pathways and walls on some of these um, hill walks and the likes. So we're doing our best to, to make sure that not only are you having a great experience, but you're contributing something back for future generations. We love that messaging. Sustainability is so important to this next <coughs> generation of travellers. Yeah. And as we look forward to these new generations experiencing destinations, we want to leave places better than we find them. So I think that's a beautiful message. Yeah. It was a few years ago, one of our drivers took it upon himself to, to um, buy a litter picker in a bag and he would jump off the tour at stops when everyone was going to visit something and he'd start picking up litter. Before you knew it, all the drivers were doing it and the customers were asking if they could join in as well. So we actually have evolved from that to now People can, if they choose, get involved in litter picks while they're on their tour. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, there's nothing that feels better than helping other people. Give them back. Yeah. I think that's a, a big reason of why people stay in the travel industry for so long, too. Because you just get to help people every day. Absolutely, yeah. It's a fun industry to work in. Definitely. And you feel that you're given something, a tangible reward, that yeah. you see people having a good time. Definitely. Yeah. Well, hopefully, our next good time will be in Scotland. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> or England, Ireland, Wales. And beyond. Yes, exactly. Well, thanks so much for joining us again, Graham. Thank you. And hopefully, see you again very soon. Thanks very much.